describe how iron and aluminium reacts with each of the following substances dilute H2SO4. So, aluminium will react with H2. SO4 to give us what Al2SO43A chaos plus hydrogen gas. Should be two, should be three, it should be what three. Now we are told to describe, right? The reactivity of aluminium with dilute H2SO4 decreases with time due to due to the passive nature due to the passive nature of our nature of aluminium right few bubbles of hydrogen gas would be seen initially after which more bubbles would be what be liberated after a brief moment of inactivity. But as for iron, iron plus H2SO4 gives us FeSO4 aqueous H2. Yeah, so iron reacts moderately with dilute H2SO4 with a steady what? With a steady effervescence until the reaction until the reaction comes to an end. Whereas for aluminium, you first of all see bubbles, it's something like this, see bubbles, bubbles will be formed, then stops, and then increases again, that is aluminium, right, with respect to 10, the volume of hydrogen against what time for aluminium, whereas for iron, it's a straight curve, right, now what happens here, at this point, at this point, the acid is trying to react with the what oxide layer, protective oxide layer of the aluminium. But it's trying to react with it to wear it off before it cannot have contact with the aluminium metal to now start liberating hydrogen gas again. All right, and that's the last question for this page. Go on to the next question. We are told to describe how iron and aluminium reacts with HNO3. We must first of all understand the equation of reaction. Aluminium will react with dilute HNO3 to form aluminum trivonitrate 5, ammonium trivonitrate 5, and water. Whereas iron we react with dilute HNO3 to form ion 2, trivonitrate 5 plus, plus NO plus H2O. Okay, so with dilute HNO3, aluminium reacts without the formation of any gas, right? You have the formation of any gas. In other words, no effervescence would occur. 
right? So, however, the aluminium metal will dissolve completely in dilute in the dilute acid after a period of time whereas for iron iron reacts with dilute HNO3 with the formation with the liberation of a colorless gas which will be seen as effervescence it will be seen as what effervescence or what bubbles right so you can also write these equations in addition to that right why is this so hno3 is a strong oxidizing agent so depending on its concentrations it reacts with different metals to give different what products right unlike other acids that would just react with metals to liberate hydrogen gas hno3 does not behave that way the hydrogen gas produced is always oxidized to water and itself is reduced to a lower what compound of nitrogen depending on its concentration and the reactivity of the metal all right remember we're told to describe here we're not told to write the equations so but the equations will help you explain or give the description correctly all right so move on to the next question write an equation for the burning of salt of salt for in air okay Burning of sulfur in air, so that's a recontact process, I, mean, I guess, is sulfur solid plus oxygen. That's giving you what? SO2 gas. Yep, straightforward. Now, name the catalyst used in the contact process. I thought as much. So, this is what vanadium name, name vanadium 5 oxide. What's the formula? v 205 in the contact process why is an excess of air used okay an excess of air an excess of air is used to ensure to ensure that the so2 formed from in the first stage is readily converted to SO3 so for 6 oxide you know the equation of reaction that's this equation SO2 gas plus O2 gas giving us uh so3 gas 2 to the presence of b205 that a that excess a is used to ensure that the so2 is converted immediately to so3 so that it will not escape into the atmosphere to pollute towards the environment all right so we move why is it necessary to cool the catalyst use that's the value 5 oxide in 5b that's here in this equation SO2 plus O2 gas giving us 2SO3 gas. That's V2O5. Okay. The catalyst is cooled to prevent the equilibrium position. To prevent the equilibrium position from moving to the left since the formation 
since the formation of SO3 is an exothermic is an exothermic word process and a low temperature a low temperature would favor a higher yield of the SO3, right? So that's the whole essence. If, because if you don't cool the catalyst, it will increase the temperature above uh, 450 watt degrees. The reaction itself creates enough heat energy that will sustain the many parts of the process. So it does not need external what heat source, right? So which is why the temperature must be what cooled. When you increase the temperature of an exothermic system, definitely the equilibrium position will shift to the left. And that's not actually what you want as an industrialist. Prevent the equilibrium position. You should be positioned here from moving to the left. Right, give a good reason why the air used in the contact process needs to be clean as possible. Yes, to prevent the poisoning of the catalyst. The air used in the contact process must be what must be as clean as possible. To prevent the poisoning of the catalyst. All right, then state two reasons why SO2 should not be discharged into the atmosphere. SO2, so for folks, that is an air pollutant and is a very toxic one for that matter. So if, if it gains access into the atmosphere, it will cause some damages it will lead to the what to the, the formation of what acid rain it causes acid rain right it will also lead to some respiratory what respiratory uh, diseases right it will lead to the respiratory diseases if it gets into atmosphere right these are part of the reasons why it should not get into the atmosphere and of course you know the damage that acid rain can cause on buildings and on plants and animals or other aquatic what organisms. Next question: State the reagents and conditions used in the laboratory preparation of chlorine. The reagents and condition. Okay, we're gonna be fast here. The reagents here are. It's one of the areas I ask you to focus on. The reagents here are concentrated hydrochloric acid. That's HCl. Two, potassium tetrahydromanganese seven. Crystals. That's KMnO four. And what's the condition for this? This is what room temperature. This reaction occurs at room temperature. This is for A. The other type groups of reagents to so still use conch ACL. You can still use conch ACL. You can use manganese 4 oxide. Manganese 4 oxide. That's the MnO2. And then the third condition, the condition here is what heat. When you're using manganese 4 oxide, you are heating it. But when you're using potassium drug manganese 7, it's a spontaneous reaction. It occurs at room temperature. All right. So this is to tell us that chlorine is prepared in the laboratory by the oxidation of um, concentrated HCl. State two uses of chlorine: purification, purification of water, using the purification of water for what? For killing bacteria or I call it gems, whichever one. Then two, for making, to use for making bleaching powder, for making bleaching powder, 
or we're making wheat killer wheat killer that's n a c l o 3 atc okay next question the last question in this examination i thought to name the drying agents for each of the following hydrogen name not formula we can use concentrated it was of a six acid or you can use fused calcium chloride or you can use silica gel anyone then so for four oxide you can use fused calcium chloride Or silica gel. I am not sure whether H2SO4 can be used as a drying agent for sulfur four oxide because was the trivial HSO4 is an oxidizing agent and so for four oxide can act both as an oxidizing and reducing agent. That's why I will not add it here, right? Yes, it may be in your textbook, but you know why they are not they are not very stable. They can wake up and tell you no, you cannot use it again, that uh, there will be a reaction just because it, SO2 can re undergo a redox reaction with concentrated 2SO4. So let's just leave it. Let's just use fused calcium chloride and silica gel, or you can add a uh, phosphorus 5 oxide. Phosphorus 5 oxide. Right, or let's write it here, phosphorus. Five oxide, all right, and then ammonia, the only alkaline gas. So, because it's an alkaline gas, we are going to use the base to dry it. That calcium oxide. That's three marks. Then, then state the components of the following alloys. Bronze, bronze is what copper and tin. While brass is what copper and zinc so that brings us to the end of our correction process right so i believe you now know how well you performed in this examination right if you enjoyed this video give us a like subscribe to this channel then turn on your notification bell wish you all the best in your remaining exams peace